Well, the, the, the first inkling I had was when I, I came in. Norm, there's this facility that is at S4. It's in the side of a mountain. And normally we had pulled in with the bus and gone around the front through a normal double door. This time that I went in, there were hangar doors open. I went into the hangar door, and in the hangar door was the disc flying saucer that I worked on. I saw it sitting there, and we walked by it, and it was an American flag stuck on the side, and I thought, oh my god, this finally explains all the flying saucer stories. This is just an advanced fighter, and this is fucking hilarious. That was the first time I had seen anything that was weird. 
it was some time later that I was introduced to my, my lab partner, Barry, and we had some of the subcomponents of the craft in the lab, and Barry was very anxious to get a good lab partner, so we were very talkative, we couldn't wait to show me different things, and it was a demonstration of the reactive working where it caught my attention to where this is technology that doesn't even exist. Nothing, there's nothing that does that. And that immediately caught my attention going, wow, this is something else. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
solo projects, um, <laughs> yeah. um, and obviously I've always been, or I've, maybe it's not obvious, I've been a drummer for a, a lot longer than I've been um, working on clarinet or electronic music, um, but I've always been, um, you know, very interested in what it means to really improvise music and really try to, um, do something from like really from scratch, um, with without a plan beforehand, and the kind of different things that arise when you take that approach really uh, intensely, I guess. Um, so this um, this piece or whatever, I don't I don't actually know. What she, yeah, I don't know what to call it, but uh, but um, it consists of a bunch of. Um, spoken word uh, tracks that I've assembled over many years that I've found interesting or inspiring um, that are mostly other artists talking about um, artistic technique or um, something that they find interesting about art and something that I find interesting about art. Um, and then I've kind of tried to build this, um, you know, different sort of set of sounds around those and sort of um, part, part of the interest of, of this project or, or what like the original idea was, um, was that when you hear something, you know, when you hear someone say something with no music, which is most of the time you hear people say things, it has a certain affect. But if you um, put like, you know, a certain mood of music behind it, it can completely change the, um, like even the actual meaning of what they say can become different, you know, something um, very innocuous, like, uh, I'm gonna come over to your house later, and then you have like, you know, scary chord, and it's like, I'm gonna come over to your house later, and it's like, oh my god, don't, you know? But so, um, so part of, part of the project came from being really interested in that phenomenon that, um, that the sounds surrounding something can be, um, can can make the uh, you know the thing that's happening very very different. Um, so I loaded all these sounds onto my computer and I found a bunch of electronic, uh, you know, I, I loaded a bunch of the inter interview clips onto my computer. I found a bunch of electronic sounds that I thought had a wide range or could have a wide range of moods to surround it, um, and then when I hit a certain key on my computer, it just plays one of the interview clips. So I don't know which one's gonna gonna come um, when I hit that when I hit that key. Um, and then whatever music is or isn't happening, I, I get to sort of um, react to uh, to that. So that's a little bit about the project. I'm gonna play maybe ten more minutes or so. Yeah. Maybe? Is that about right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
that I remember when I got my first set of oil paints. It was very messy, and it uh, involved a lot of turpentine and oil and paint spreading all around the house. And, you know, my parents would be sort of, try to keep it all in your bedroom, try not to get it all over the place. And so drawing was the kind of thing where you'd have a notebook, make a drawing in it, shut the notebook, put it in your desk drawer, nobody would see it. It's much more of a private kind of thing. Whereas painting requires sitting out, letting it dry, anyone can come by and see what you're doing. So I always loved drawing for the privacy of it. It's a cleaner way of making art. Later on, I realized 
a lot of other artists kind of felt the same way. That maybe they felt a little ashamed of being artists or being creative, and so they kind of um, embedded a, a kind of labor aspect of it into it. And I think that's probably partially true for me. beginning, but something more than beginning is potential, or to emerge out of going into, to emerge. Yeah, so we're going to give uh, like 